Parkside Cabin Rentals, affordable rustic luxury in the Smokies, chalets and log cabins from intimate to grand, in town or in total seclusion. We can fit any need you have. Visit ParksideCabinRentals.com. Plan your vacation today. Southeast Termite and Pest Control can help protect your home from animals, trapping and relocating wildlife, fixing the damage they cause, and preventing them from invading your home in the first place. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control and ask about our many services. The following is a presentation of Fox 43 Sports. Let's talk Tennessee football. This is the Sports Source Kickoff, presented by Parkside Cabin Rentals. Now, your host, John Pennington. Good game day morning to you. Welcome into the Sports Source Kickoff, presented by Parkside Cabin Rentals here on Fox 43. Only about an hour and a half till kickoff, so we're going to have a lot to cover uh, before Tennessee plays UTEP uh, just a little while. Uh, we will break down the game. We'll talk about this Tennessee team. Is it living up to expectations? I think for a lot of people, the answer is no. We'll see what our guys say. Let's get right into this thing. First segment of our program brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals Sister Property, and they have many up there. The Oak Tree Lodge, located across the street from Tanger Outlets at Five Oaks. They offer spacious rooms with hickory furniture and true southern charm right in the heart of the Smokies. And if you stay at the Oak Tree Lodge, you can enjoy free parking when visiting downtown Gatlinburg. All that when you stay at the Oak Tree Lodge. Check them out. OaktreeLodge.com. Let me welcome in the panelists for today's show. We have from WNML the duo of Josh Ward and Jimmy Himes. Thanks mm -hmm. both of you for being here. Former mm -hmm. Vol player, VFL down there, Shazan Bradley right. back with us. Thanks for being with us, Shazan. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, Tennessee comes into today's game at one and one. UTEP comes in at zero and fourteen. If you go back to last year, I think we have a. Uh, graphic here to put up some numbers for you to show you just how bad they have been. They're on a 14 game losing streak. Uh, it's just one of the worst teams in the country. Out of 130 FBS teams, right now they have to be considered number 130. You see there, that's their last 14 games. And if you tally all that up, 13 of those 14 losses have been by 14 points or more. The average victory, the average loss for them, 25 points. So you got a real quality opponent coming in here. Uh, to Neyland Stadium in just a little while. Uh, ETSU was awful as well. Tennessee gets the 59-3 win last week. Congratulations. There were still some issues. Offensive line, you should have been able just to line up and not have any issues against East Tennessee State, especially when it comes to pass rush and your offensive line. And both of those were an issue last week. Uh, two games in now, you've seen those as issues through two games. Secondary was an issue in game one. ETSU couldn't take advantage of that this past week. Probably UTEP won't either, but the SEC might. So you got two or three things that's still glaring red flags, I mm -hmm. think, for this team. Is this team what you expected to see? Is it better or worse than you anticipated coming into the season? Shazan? Well, you know, it's, it's a little bit worse than what I expected. Um, I, I was drinking that Sterling Hinton Kool-Aid and <laughs> uh, telling you it was, it was bad. I think he had a lot of alcohol in it. But, I mean, it, it's, um, you know, one thing about it is, you know, in 88, I came here, my first season here, it was, you know, we, we lost the first five games. Um, after that, we, we, didn't, we didn't lose, we didn't lose yeah. five over the next four years. Um, you know, in, 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 at the beginning of the game, it was almost like you were in a football game. It was like, it was like a Benny Hill show because everything <laughs> was so fast. It moved so fast. After the fifth game, it all started slowing down. And I, I think we have the right coach in place to do to teach the, the, the pad level, how you stay low, how you take care of yourself, um, fun, fun, the good fundamentals. And, yeah. and, and it takes, it take, it's going to take four or five games for these kids to really get to know each other, be able to read each other because in, inside of that stadium it's it's loud but we talk to one another and, and you, you hear me like we're talking beside each other yeah. and they got to get to that point to where the crowd's not there it's just them and their buddy and the opponent i don't know that they can get there in four or five games though that team you're talking on about in 88 went on to win two sec titles there was a heck of a lot of talent on that team i don't know about this team we'll, we'll get to that in a second what about you guys is this they're about what I expected. Uh, they're a little above, below where you guys thought it, going in. Where, it's kind of interesting. When you analyze it, to me, 
I, I thought they would be uh, – well, the offensive line, I, I didn't have high hopes, but I thought the offensive line is, is worse than I thought it would be. Pass rush hadn't been there. I don't think the secondary is very good. I do think that uh, on the flip side of that, the special teams are actually a little better than I thought they might be. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll give them a positive there. Uh, I think the running back depth is better than I thought because I wouldn't anticipate anything out of Jeremy Banks. But when you shuffle all of that together and mix it in a pot, this team is not quite as good as I thought it would be. And uh, primarily that's going to go to the offensive line because I don't think this is going to be a real good offensive team because I think it will be held back by the line. Yeah, I would re reiterate what Jimmy said, that I, I thought Tennessee would be a little better early on, but I'm also not surprised that the issues are there. The, the concerns that were there, they've shown up. And with the offensive line having problems and Tennessee not being able to run block very well and then not being able to apply pressure on defense, well, those outweigh, in this case, literally, some of the other things that have been positives. There are things to build on. You are playing some young players in spots like the secondary when they got lit up in the West Virginia game. That wasn't a surprise. There's something to build on, but I do think that's going to take some time. I'll give you this. I didn't think this team would be taking huge steps forward. I, didn't, mm -hmm. uh, I said five and seven before the season. I'm still kind of in that zone. Uh, but to, to your point, I, if you told me before the season that they would not be able to run any better against East Tennessee State than they did, yeah, that would have surprised me. So I'll, I'll give you that one that that one's a little bit below my expectations. But the reason this team isn't far below my expectations overall is just because my expectations were pretty low. I just, <laughs> I, if I, I, I'm past the point of saying, oh, I believe they'll get better. Prove it to me. I, I want to see mm -hmm. it first. And, and part of that is a good lead into what I want to talk about now. Those people who did think that there were going to be massive improvements this year, seven, eight, nine wins, those folks looked at a roster and said, all right, we got 33 guys, according to 24-7 sports, 33 guys on this roster who were four- or five-star recruits. They're not playing like four- and five-star recruits. I think if you took somebody out of the stands from another game, you took somebody from an Auburn game in here and said, all right, point out the four- and five-stars, they'll point out Trey Smith, they'll say Callaway looks pretty good. I don't know how many other four- and fives they could identify by their level of play. Where is the talent level on this team? You need playmakers if you're going to have – that 89 team you're talking about had playmakers. This one, I don't know where they are in terms of impact players. How many of these guys would have competed – it's 20 years ago, and this is a hell of a standard to set, but how many of these guys would have competed for playing time on the 98 team or even back in the 89 to 90 teams? I just um, don't know how many I could say, yeah, him, 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 and him. Two would have started, in my opinion. Two Trace, would have started. Trey Smith and? Dominic Wood Anderson at the tight end. Because Eric Diagu was the tight end. In 98, okay. In 98. And see, other I, than that, not going there. Now, you've got some people that, that could have got some playing time. Callaway, Nigel Warrior, maybe the linebackers. Jennings when he's healthy Jennings and at his best. Healthy. But start, I got two. I think we got a lot of football players. We don't have any athletes. Athletes <laughs> meaning a guy that can break it and make things happen. And, um, you know, I, you know, I think Butch is calling up 24-7, up, up hey, I'm getting ready to sign this, this fat kid named Shazam Bradley from McMahon County to put a four-star beside his name. I mean, these guys, wow. Well, I mean, you, you've had, had some guys that were disappointments, and there's no question. Some people that had names that when you got them, it's like, oh, that, his daddy. And it's like, oh, that didn't turn out to be his, – his daddy was the better player than he is. There's two or three on that list. Um, but when you look at this team – I just don't see, speaking of that athlete thing, you should be able to out-athlete East Tennessee State's defensive line with your offensive line. And I know offensive linemen aren't considered great athletes, but you should have been able to push those guys around. Pass rush, for goodness sakes, there's got to be somebody with a step on the offensive line for East Tennessee State where you can get past those guys. got to be somebody, isn't there? But apparently we don't see it. Yeah. I just don't know the talent. Yeah, you mentioned last weekend after the game, John, the stat that Mars Hill tripled Tennessee's sack total. Yeah against ETSU and then on the offensive line when but you did get a hurry you yeah. got a sack and a hurry <laughs> yeah uh, and, then, and then the offensive line when you're coming out of the lightning delay and you look up at the stat sheet and ETSU is yet to gain a rushing yard but it's out rushing you because you have negative one <laughs> rushing yeah. yards yeah. I mean so th that's going to add to the frustration as well and that's what they're trying to break out of today well, here, I think one of the reasons for the optimism from a lot of people is they looked at the number four and five stars and they said the previous staff couldn't Develop didn't coach them up. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't coach them up. Couldn't develop them. This staff will do that. And that gets back to the turnaround being much more difficult to, to move quickly. Well, and the other issue is, okay, I'll, I'll give you that they didn't coach, the previous staff didn't coach them up. 
how long does it take for this staff to coach them up? I, and I was telling Josh That's before correct. I read something on a message board today laughing at it. They said, hey, this offensive line coach, he had all spring and all fall camp to turn things around. It's inexcusable. He's incompetent that they haven't done it. It's like, yeah, he had a whole spring and a whole off season to turn it all around. It's uh, the expectations were a little too high. And now, all I'm saying, I'm not trying to be Mr. Negative here, maybe they do turn it around mid-season like that team in 88, 89. But my guess is I'm not seeing playmakers stand up against East Tennessee State. So the chances of them standing up suddenly against Georgia or Auburn or South Carolina or Missouri, we'll wait and see. One, I don't see it One happening. quick thing on 88 to 89. 88 team redshirted Chuck Webb and Carl Pickens. Those guys in 89 were pretty darn good. Yes. Yeah. So that helped make a difference in 89. Sounds good. All right. Uh, when we come back, the fourth member of our, well, the fifth member of our team, the fourth panelist joins us, Tyler White. We have a professional handicapper. That's what he is. He's going to come in. We're going to look at three areas where Tennessee kind of needs to improve, three areas that are key matchups for today versus UTEP. Come on back. We'll discuss. Did you know English Mountain Spring Water has been named the world's best tasting water? That a French competition declared it a gourmet water? Did you know English Mountain Spring Water is bottled in Dandridge? And it's available for commercial and residential water service across East Tennessee. Clear, pure water with no aftertaste. From an East Tennessee source and a local company providing unmatched service. English Mountain Spring Water. The Lodge at Five Oaks, conveniently located within walking distance to some of the area's best attractions, restaurants, and shops. Call now for special rates throughout the week or visit the Lodge at FiveOaks.com to plan your next getaway today. Since 1971, Southeast Termite and Pest Control has offered free inspections, multiple pest control options, and guaranteed termite prevention and correction. Times have changed. Our service hasn't. Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Under Tennessee law, you're entitled to money damages for injuries caused by the negligence of others. How much money often depends on the diligence, skill, and experience of your attorney. A Knoxville law firm has been helping injured people for more than 30 years. At Bill Hotz and Associates, we've collected millions of dollars from insurance companies that didn't want to treat injured people fairly. Is your case worth more than the insurance company says? Call Bill Hudson Associates and find out. When it comes to your business, no one provides better security and life safety systems than Safety Systems. Protect your employees, your products, and your records with a single phone call. Professional technicians ready to design, install, and monitor your cutting edge fire and security systems, electric locks and surveillance cameras, emergency and after hours response and repairs. Trust Safety Systems, East Tennessee's leader in security and life safety systems. Just 60 miles from Knoxville, adventure meets sanctuary at the historic Topoco Lodge. Originally opened in 1930, this renovated, reborn mountain retreat offers cozy, well-appointed rooms, cabins, and suites, waterfront dining, our warm signature service, and plenty of outdoor sports and activities, all within our riverside, creekside, and forest setting. Experience the historic Topoco Lodge, where adventure meets sanctuary. Parkside Cabin Rentals, affordable, rustic luxury in the Smokies. Hot tubs, pool tables, fireplaces inside and out. Our cabins are perfect for relaxing or entertaining. Visit ParksideCabinRentals.com. Plan your vacation today. Welcome back into the Sports Source kickoff. This segment brought to you by English Mountain Spring Water. You just saw the ad for it. From a pure mountain spring right up the road in Dandridge comes a water that has been ranked as one of the world's best time and again national competitions international competitions and terrific service if you have bottled water in your office or if you have residential service folks do yourself a favor call the folks at english mountain spring water just taste their water the service is fantastic but just taste the water you'll be blown away by how good it is all right uh want to welcome in the next round or the next wave of panelists and that's a wave of one there he is down there, Tyler Wyatt. Uh, I'm used to waving in bunches of guys on Sunday, so I apologize. Uh, Tyler Wyatt, professional handicapper. You can see his work at 3 for the money dot win is his website. Um, and uh, I have asked you each and every week to give us three over-unders to kind of give us a little conversation point here based on impact areas, um, key matchups, places Tennessee needs to improve. 
The first one I see over there is two and a half. What do we got? Two and a half takeaways for Tennessee. Pretty easy here. Uh, UTEP averaging, giving it up three times a game. Tennessee through the first couple of games averaging two. We split the middle and we took two and a half. Okay, very good. You got to give, uh, if, if you're looking at a defense that hasn't overpowered anybody with the pass rush, you have, there are two areas you have to praise them for. And you bring up, you brought this up on our Sunday show. Third down defense has been good. Mm -hmm. And then also your plus four in turnover margin. That also speaks mm -hmm. to your offense, but plus four in turnover margin. So you've taken the ball away from the opponents. UTEP. I'm going to go over. I'll say over on two and a half takeaways for Tennessee. I think they'll take it away two and a half or more times. Yeah, I'll go over as well. With the issues UTEP's had plus the activity we've seen from Tennessee's defense, I'd say they'll bring energy early on or try to. And UTEP, let's see early on uh, with the noon kickoff today if they do that. So I'll, I'll say uh, over for Tennessee on the turnovers. I'm going to go over. I think that UTEP uh, will throw a couple of interceptions. It won't be because of Tennessee's pass rush, but they will throw a couple of interceptions and probably fumble along the way. Plus, this is a 10 a.m. kickoff for the yeah. Miners. Yeah. They'll be sleepwalking through the first quarter. <laughs> She's on I'm Tennessee. Gonna I'm going to agree with Jimmy. Same thing. Okay, going over. All right. Uh, Tyler, what's the next one up there? 242.5. 242 and a half rushing yards. Uh, we've been high on Tennessee. Maybe a little bit disappointed. Too high. Uh, we're going up 13 <laughs> yards from last a week. It's a UTEP defense that's just bad. I mean, this, this team would be a small favorite over ETSU. Uh, seven of their last 14 opponents have ran for over 300 yards. Uh, Tennessee, we're going up from last week. I, I want to see improvement, but we're going to 42 and a half here. And they gave up, what, 400 plus? To UNLV. To UNLV. Yes. They are the running rebels, after all, but still, <laughs> they don't, usually don't run for 400 on anybody. <laughs> Uh, I'll start with you guys. I'll go last on this one. Over under Tennessee, 242 and a half rushing yards. Well, Ty, Ch <laughs> Ty Chandler coming back gives Tennessee a shot to That's like a big home run threat. <laughs> uh, but uh, he might need to do it a couple times. I'm, I went under last week. I'm going to stay under. I'm going to go over because I think in the fourth quarter, Tennessee's going to run for 100 yards. That means only 50 in the other three quarters, right? Okay. Yeah. So that gets you to 250. You better hope they get 50 in the first quarter and not <laughs> yeah, zero again. Well, <laughs> and I, think Ch I think Chandler will break a long run, too. So I, I think uh, I'm going to go over. Okay. I'm going to go over also. Let's, um, they, they're, you know, they're, I think they'll be, they're, they will be jailing here in just a bit. Um, they, 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 they'll get the running game together this week, I think, okay. and we'll get um, <laughs> I'll go over, but I'm basing that on – UTEP's, def uh, UTEP's numbers <laughs> on uh, on rush defense the last yeah. seven games or so, that's they're pretty horrible. So I'll go over for Tennessee. And for the third week in a row, I'll regret going over with their rushing totals. <laughs> uh, Tyler, what's the last one over there, man? Last one over here, 11 and a half. This will be offensive plays of zero or less. Tennessee through the first two games averaging 14 plays at zero or, or less. It's, it's got to improve there. It's a UTEP defense. Uh, that has forced 10 each in their first two games. Uh, we have to see that number go down. Uh, but we split the middle there, 11 and a half plays of zero or less yards. All right, Tennessee, 16 plays, and we're not counting incompletions, but 16 mm -hmm. plays of zero or fewer yards against West Virginia, 12 against East Tennessee State. Which is just unacceptable. That is incredibly unacceptable. No. That's not only unacceptable, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, you know, I wouldn't bet the house on anything. I probably would have bet the house that they won't have 12, <laughs> you know, plays against ETSU that went backwards. I, I'm stunned by that. And because of that, I'm going to go over. I think they'll screw it up and give up 12 again. So I'm going to go over here. I'll go under on this one. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to go under just because I think UTEP's defense is so bad. If Tennessee can run for that many yards. It's worse than East Tennessee State. Yes. That's I do. I think wow. it's worse. That is really hey, awful. Let's, well, look at what Mars Hill did against <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Sense. What are you doing, Shazam? I'm going to go under also. I mean, okay. it's um, <laughs> obvious. All right, Tyler, I'm gonna, I, I skipped you each time, so I'm going to let you do it. One, two, three. Where are you going? You make the final call. Tell us who's right and who's wrong. Uh, takeaways will be over. This is a UTEP offense that's not very good. Tennessee has showed energy in game two. I think they get a couple of interceptions and I think a couple of fumbles. I think that's easily over. Rushing yards for Tennessee. Third time has to be the charm. Two games that <laughs> Tennessee yeah. has struggled. Uh, but, this is the game. By yeah. that logic, we would have been sitting here for 12 weeks last year doing that. Absolutely. Well, this week's going to be Josh different. nailed that one. Ty Chandler being back. 11 and a half offensive plays. Tennessee will get it together. Uh, that number has to improve for any success in the SEC. But Tennessee, I think, yeah. stays in the single digits in the uh, zero or less uh, yardage plays. Okay. 
<laughs> I just, I, I'm stunned by some of these numbers that we're yeah. having to discuss in week three against a really bad foe. Uh, the, the, the one that Tyler threw out there at the last one, that 11 and a half, the fact that you had 16 plays go backwards against a West Virginia defense that isn't very good. That's, that's the equivalent, unless they've mm -hmm. really improved this year, and I doubt it, but that would be a lower end of the SEC type defense. And then to have 12 more against an FCS school. That's, that's worrisome. I mean, that's, if you want something that stands out about your offensive line, that's the one that's the scariest stat out there, in my view. All right, guys, uh, when we come back, we usually do Tennessee will win if. We'll do that next week when it's Florida because they may lose, they may win. We'll do something to discuss. They're going to win today, so we're going to ask Tennessee will win and be impressive if. What do they have to do today against UTEP to impress us? That's next on the Sports Source Kickoff, presented by Parkside Kevin Reynolds. Southeast Termite and Pest Control can help protect your home from animals, trapping and relocating wildlife, fixing the damage they cause, and preventing them from invading your home in the first place. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control and ask about our many services. The Lodge at Five Oaks, conveniently located within walking distance to some of the area's best attractions, restaurants, and shops. Call now for special rates throughout the week or visit the lodge at fiveoaks.com to plan your next getaway today. Just 60 miles from Knoxville, adventure meets sanctuary at the historic Topoco Lodge, featuring the Topoco Tavern with comfortable seating inside or riverside for lunch and dinner, expanded patio dining, private rooms for events, drinks on the observation deck, and at our multiple bars. Try the Carolina Mountain Trout, a Black Angus choice ribeye, or build your own hand-tossed pizza. Experience the Topoco Tavern at the historic Topoco Lodge. When it comes to your home, no one provides better security and audio video systems than Safety Systems. Control everything using your tablet or smartphone. Whether it's a hidden TV or the temperature in your home. Lighting, doors that open and close, lock and unlock. Cameras that allow you to watch your home from wherever you may be, all at the touch of a button. Trust Safety Systems, East Tennessee's leader in security and audio video systems. Under Tennessee law, you're entitled to money damages for injuries caused by the negligence of others. How much money often depends on the diligence, skill, and experience of your attorney. A Knoxville law firm has been helping injured people for more than 30 years. At Bill Hudson Associates, we've collected millions of dollars from insurance companies that didn't want to treat people fairly. Have you been hurt in a car wreck? Are you being treated fairly? Call us and find out. Experience you can trust. Did you know English Mountain Spring Water has been named the world's best tasting water? That a French competition declared it a gourmet water? Did you know English Mountain Spring Water is bottled in Dandridge? and it's available for commercial and residential water service across East Tennessee. Clear, pure water with no aftertaste. From an East Tennessee source and a local company providing unmatched service. English Mountain Spring Water. Southeast Termite and Pest Control is locally owned, locally operated, handling thousands of commercial and residential jobs all across East Tennessee. Protect your home with a free inspection and estimate from Southeast Termite and Pest Control. <laughs> and welcome back into the Sports Source kickoff. This segment brought to you by Bill Hotson Associates. Did you know there are about 1,000 car accidents in Knox County, just Knox County, mm -hmm. each year? And about 300 of those involve injuries. Across East Tennessee, there's even more. And if you find yourself the victim of a careless driver injured in an accident, out of wages that you've lost at work because you're having to sit home or medical bills, uh, you need to contact the law offices of Bill Hotz and Associates. They're on your side, and the thing is, those drivers, they've got insurance for a reason. So, Bill Hotz and Associates are the folks to call. Good team, good folks. Bill Hotz and Associates. All right, uh, Tennessee versus UTEP shortly, a little over an hour. Um, each week, we're going to explain here, Tennessee will win if. On these last two weeks when you're playing high school teams, it's kind of useless. So, we're going to change it today. Tennessee will win and impress me if. What do they have to do to impress you today against UTEP? Well, I will start with 
Tennessee has to go under that number we discussed last segment on negative yards on offense, but it's not just that. Uh, Tennessee has a message to its players. The coaching staff does go dominate your opponent. That's what George is talking about doing. That's what Alabama is doing, and they're doing that on the field. Tennessee can't do that yet in SEC games. Tennessee should dominate up front UTEP. So if we come out next week talking about, well, Tennessee was dominant last week against UTEP, that gives you a better shot against Florida. Yeah, basically, you don't have win in the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Tennessee runs for 243 yards. That'll impress <laughs> me. Uh, I'm going to watch for the penalties, where Tennessee's done a really nice job in that regard. They've got the fewest penalty yards of anybody in the league, so can they continue to play discipline? Zero turnovers. Uh, they're one of only three teams in the NCAA that's played two games that has zero turnovers. That's another good sign of, of discipline with mm -hmm. this team. So those would be a couple of areas I would look for from Tennessee. Shazan, what would impress you? Don't blow assignments and dominate up front on, on both sides of the ball. All right. That's what I've got, too. I, had, uh, I have to own the line of scrimmage from the beginning. I mean, here's the thing. If they win 59-3 mm -hmm. to three this week and it's not due to interception returns, you know, blocked punts, it's due to lining up and just running it down their throats, then I will hand it to them. Then you'll hear me half, happy after a 59-3 to three win. Leave no doubt about it, win on both sides of the line of scrimmage. That's key for this team. Out-athlete them because you should. Tyler, uh, in terms of the line for this game, uh, where did it wind up and how are you? Now, here's the thing. You usually ask people to pay you. There are people from all over the country <laughs> that go to three for the money dot win for your picks and they pay you for them. I, I try and get you to give me a free one every week. So what do you got in terms of what the line is and who you, what are you doing? What's the play for Tennessee today? Number 31 and a half, total 47, 48 points. They're expecting a lopsided uh, game from Tennessee here in about an hour and a half. Uh, right now, I would lean Tennessee. Uh, showed a lot last week in improvement. This is a bad team. No disrespect of it. Northern Arizona, a seven-point favorite over UTEP, and there are probably <laughs> a dozen FCS, FCS teams. teams that would be favored over this team. Tennessee needs to dominate, and I think they easily cover this number, 31 and a half. And what are you doing with the over, with the over-under? I think it goes way over. I think Tennessee covers it by themselves. I think uh, this is a, a, there's no reason that Tennessee shouldn't get into the 50s. Maybe a couple of field goals or a, a late garbage score by UTEP, but I think Tennessee covers the total by themselves. Okay, very good. Um, I just wonder, guys, you look at this team. You've seen Florida. They didn't look good against Kentucky. And let's go ahead. We can start the look ahead. Hopefully tomorrow at, on, on the Channel 6 show when we're doing a Sunday breakdown, we won't be talking about a UTEP surprise. Uh, we'll be talking plenty about Florida. Uh, but the Florida loss to Kentucky, I think that geared up a lot of people thinking, okay, now Tennessee can beat these guys. Mm -hmm. Is there anything they can do? To, if they come out of here today and do the things we talked about that would impress is, that gonna make you, is there anything they can do to make you confident going into next Saturday at Naval Stadium? Confident that Tennessee can win? No, mm. I've, I've been confident this week that it's going to be an ugly game next week between yes. Tennessee and Florida. And that's a lot because of the way things went for Florida last week. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything changes. If Florida loses to Colorado State, then I might say, whoa, the haters have some real right. problems here. Colorado State beat Arkansas. Uh, but no, I, I'm pretty sad. I, I think both teams have a lot to prove next Saturday. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything mm. Tennessee can do today that would – change my feelings about Florida next week. Nothing they can do to make me confident mm -hmm. that they would Could go Florida. the other that's, way. That's the yeah. key word. I think Tennessee's outplayed Florida each of the last four years. They got one win to show for it. And they've had a tendency to blow games against Florida. Two late long passes have, have uh, accomplished that. So, no, there's nothing Tennessee can do to make me confident. Do I think Tennessee has a chance? Yes. If they go in the line of scrimmage and get beat by UTEP on the line of scrimmage, then I'm going the other way. Yeah. But, no, I don't think there's anything Tennessee could do to make me confident it would beat Florida. Shazan, the step up from what they're seeing these last two weeks to the SEC, it's a huge one, and it's coming right down the pike. you got two of the worst teams that have ever stepped foot in that stadium, and now, and I've only got like 30 seconds here, now you're about ready for Florida in this group. You're talking about turning things around. I don't know if they can do it. We have Jimmy Pruitt here now. I think we got us a real coach. I think we're, we're, we're the chopping wood. And, and we just got to hold our heads down, keep chopping, keep going, keep coming. It's going to come. It's, it's going to take us a little minute, but it's going to come. Well, keep chopping wood. I hope they just don't hit themselves <laughs> in the leg with the axe the way the Jaguars hunter did a few years ago. Uh, thanks to these guys. Thanks to you. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow on WATE uh, Channel 6 for the Sports Source. It's 11 a.m. See you then.
This has been a presentation of Fox 43 Sports.